The following is a presentation of TFNN. Time to talk about your health. Living a primal lifestyle. Yeah, we have Tom on t from Tampa on the phone. Hey, Tom. Good morning. It's bright and early now, huh? Hey, thanks. Good. Hi, Tom. How you guys doing? Nico? Doing great. Good. Hey, um, your newsletter's outstanding, man. I'm, I'm telling you, man, it is outstanding. And so is the Vernimal Edge. I love that stuff. I'd never be without it. I mean, I've been on it now three, four months, man. I mean, it's just I can't get over how good I feel. Primal Edge is, uh, you know, people are raving about it. People who are trying it, they know because you can feel it. We'd not be without it. Call now. Toll free at one 877 927-6648 internationally at 727-445-1044 now your hosts nico dehan and paige clark good morning i'm nico dehan welcome to living a primal lifestyle where we explore a return to a more balanced and natural wild world that's right nico i'm paige clark and this is where we recover our natural health and we regain our rights and our freedoms good and morning it's a beautiful morning in downtown clearwater 67 degrees the sun is out it's a sunny day it's going to be gorgeous yes absolutely we've been really lucky i mean here we are in may and it's Still, we still have these nice, cool mornings. Yeah, I love it's it. It's unusual and it's wonderful. Hey, if you have any questions, feel free to contact uh, myself or Nico at page at tfnn.com. Nico at tfnn.com. Of course, we're taking your phone calls right now at 877-927-6648. Please pick up our Health Signals newsletter, April uh, 17th edition, number uh, 10 of the year. So mm -hmm. uh, we talk about sunshine, but a lot more is in there, folks. All the stuff that we talk about every single week. So pick that up. It's only $10 a month. You know, awesome. and I, I like the subject matter we're going to talk about today. Oh, good. I wanted to mention, of course, uh, Primal Edge. Yeah. Oh, go ahead. Yeah. Uh, you know, over 310 cell-ready ingredients, liquid ingredients, makes it very easy to take. It's all powered by humic and fulvic acid. Nature's oh, miracle molecule. That's right, and it lets the good stuff in. And the bad stuff out. Yeah. So today, yeah, I really wanted to talk about play. Uh, something that seems to be missing from our society. And the author of this uh, uh, magazine, uh, Diane, Diane Levin. Le Levin, yes. She says, uh, my district mandates that all four-year-olds must be reading by the end of the pre-K year. That means before they enter kindergarten. What research supports these ridiculous demands and how will they help my children in any way in the future? Uh, there's a lot of things going on That's in schools crazy. these days. Uh, this uh, particular author visited the preschool and kindergarten classes to better understand the concerns voiced by many teachers dealing with the current school mandates. You know, this is interesting, Nico, because I was reading an article this <coughs> week, and we've just become convinced that we need to basically take our children into these buildings, mm -hmm. be exposed to Wi-Fi and all these crazy things. That's one of the things that I really feel sure. we've got to start taking a look at these schools. In many countries, they're actually outlawing, outlawing Wi-Fi. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not good for any of us, and it's certainly not good for developing brains. But I digress. My point is, why do we locking our kids up in buildings all day anyways? Well, that's the ultimate thing, is they're locking them up in a sense. <clears throat> what, they, what she's saying here is, I see children spending carefully regulated blocks of time doing highly structured teacher-directed activities. Many of the activities focus on completing skill-based tasks in reading math with only one right answer. It's common to hear that approximately two hours of reading and at least one hour of math instructions are required each day. And this is preschool mm -hmm. and kindergarten, but it does accelerate from there. Yeah, it really does seem like pretty much most teachers have formal commercially produced uh, curriculum materials and they, that they use. And that is one of the reasons I think many people are looking towards some of these other trends, the Waldorf school concept. The Sudbury school. The Sudbury school the uh, Montessori, and even there's a huge group, uh, real good friends of mine actually live in your neighborhood, um, the Unschool mm -hmm. group. Right. It's an, they actually have a convention. It's called the Unschoolers. Yep. Yep. And uh, many of their kids are building computers and getting really advanced in sports, and I think it's something we all need to take a little, you know, take a look at. But I think the point this author is making, one of the biggest things that they're saying in this particular article is the structure is there and the teachers and the parents make the structure whether they're at the school or at home it's all structured and as we know play is not really structured 
it's structured in a way because we have a few rules but a lot of times we'll bend those rules as children mm -hmm. uh, we get creative this is where we get our creative our intuition from this is how we make friends this is this where is we actually we... focus more with our right brain instead of our left brain but they're they're really trying to shove it into the family that that we need to activate that left brain and I think not it says what about play in these classrooms Nico mm -hmm. very few hands-on materials are present and when they are there are few opportunities in the daily curriculum rigidly scheduled for the children to actually do that or to play and um, yeah, so when it does actually occur it's uh, right. often you know teacher assigns games involving very basic skills with one right way to do them you either do it right or you do it wrong yes so it is really sad and in and, and many schools today I think recess has become almost something that they eliminate as if it was an important. Yeah, yeah, some teachers say that they are allowed to have 20 minutes of recess after lunch in some cases just two or three times a week. Of course, structured into the Canadian schools when I was in elementary school there, uh, it was structured to have a play before lunch, a play after lunch, and of course lunch was an hour to an hour and a half. Mm -hmm. It wasn't <clears> this 20 minute lunch. It wasn't the 20 minute lunch and recess was about a half hour. Uh, they later shortened it to 15 they minutes. They really gave kids an hour and and a half lunch. Yeah. Isn't that because in elementary school, not right, high school. Right. right, but I mean, you know what think about that that kind of continued the the trend in the house, which was that mealtime was a time of gathering and communication and exchanging. Well, in the last couple of years, when I was living in London, Canada, I was close enough to school that at lunchtime I could walk home. My mother would fix me lunch. And then you get I back. Was, and then I would just walk back. <clears throat> but I never really liked lunch at school. I was never bought into buying lunch at school. I know a lot of kids did, but coming from a foreign country, I had my tastes completely out of whack when I went to Canada. Mm -hmm. So the lunches just didn't agree with me. I don't know if other kids felt that way, but I certainly did. And I said, Mom, I need to come home. Mm -hmm. And then when high school came, I just bagged it most of the time. Right, right. Yeah, very interesting. But really what's going on is why is play being driven out of classrooms today when it has long been recognized as the important part of our children's development and learning. And there's been so many people talking about it, but uh, you know, it seems that the argument today seems to be that the sooner we begin teaching basic academic skills, the better, and children will do better in the long run. But is that true? You know, you know, what's going saw, on with so many trouble And I saw this pattern as, as I was going into high school. I saw the things changing in elementary mm -hmm. school. And the same thing uh, with uh, the high school curriculum ch changes, too. Especially, I think, from the 80s on, it was worse. Of course, I was out of school by then. Mm -hmm. But you were able to recognize it. I definitely recognized it, uh, you know, because play, to me, is the human being's way of getting exercise. The way we always did exercise was, I mean, exercise for health is relative, relatively a new uh, concept because we never did that. The exercise yard was for war. Yeah. This was for you know, learning skills to uh, you know, defend yourself. Uh, there was some Olympics uh, 2,000 years ago, and we know that, but I think it stems from the battle in the beginning. That's right, and, and as, we, as I just said, many people are experts so to speak are saying that they think that this might be better for children in the long run mm -hmm. but in fact few if any early childhood educators who have been trained to meet the learning needs of young people were consulted in the development of the new academic teaching standards yep. let's continue the conversation let's get back to play yes and start off with primal edge if you give your kids this this is a great way to enhance their ability to play so there you go. Uh, we'll be right back folks You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powered by highly concentrated fulvic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They have been called miracle molecules because, like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every morning. morning. 
Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Page of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Platinum, grains, crude oil, gold, copper, cattle, hogs, gasoline, natural gas, coffee, cotton, cocoa, and sugar. These are just some of the commodities mentioned in the most recent issue of Andy Hecht's Techno Mental Commodity Report. Andy publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you're under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you will lock in the low rate of only $79 a month. Sign up right now for the Technomental Commodity Report and make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. Nico and Paige take your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Guys, all work and no play make for a really boring day. And Nico and I are talking about this, the community of, uh, of playing and the loss of playing in the educational setting in our schools would m perhaps maybe not be quite as worrisome if we still had play environments at home like we used to. But for some time now, there's been a growing concern about what's happening to the play environment that children have at home. Are children spending more and more time where they used to spend, you know, outdoors and creating things on their own, they're now sitting in front of a screen, um, you know, looking at um, iPads, iPhones, and day, noon, and night in homes, in their cars, in the supermarket. And screens are now taking over what used to be time for child-centered, creative, self-expression, family playtime. And uh, it's interesting because they say that these kids today now are imitating the scripted characters, the Disney characters that they see over and over again, instead of creating characters of their own imagination. And uh, so, so this is really something that those the people that are paying attention to this work mm -hmm. are really concerned about. Many you children know, are having trouble using play at home to work in their own unique understanding and meetings in their <coughs> own unique ways, vital for both their intellectual growth and emotional well-being. Sorry. No, that's all right. Uh, you know, uh, the concept I want people to get that play is a completely different thing than competing because play is always fun. It is fun. And that sets up our mind for happiness. And this is what human beings inherently automatically get through play. We're happy. We're having fun. Nothing's too serious. You win. That's cool. I win. That's cool. There's no problem here. But this whole upside down world we're living in everything is structured now if i want to do some simple exercise i got to put the stupid uniform on and get on my bike we're in holland everybody's on doesn't matter what you wear on a bike <laughs> okay. but here if we're into some kind of sports we have to go, have to go full oh yeah we got to spend three hundred dollars on the yeah. bike and three hundred dollars on so the outfit and then, you have different and then, colors. then you're going down the street am i looking like uh you know i'm <laughs> on the tour de france here i have to look that way uh, I uh same with rollerblading we have fancy uniforms for every type of activity and the kids pick this up now 
what I said earlier about play being our original way to health as far as exercise is concerned, that's, I really mean that because that's the only way we had exercise. We didn't have fitness centers on every gym that you had to literally, in other words, like you have to put on an outfit to go exercise, well, right, to go shower and then yeah. go back into the world. No, we used it as play and even adults play. We danced. Mm -hmm. uh, you met in this town square. My parents danced all the time. They go to these special little clubs just to do the dancing. You know, this is the form of play. This is our ancient form of gathering, dancing around the fire. Or, or so, at the town square, like after, <clears throat> I think about sure. in Italy, and probably, you know, people did little, you know, did did uh, handstands and, of hey, course. watch me do this, hey, well, you do this. Go down to Venice Beach, go down to Key West at mm -hmm. the end. You know, all these things always go on, and then we think, boy, how unusual. It's fun. It's unusual. It's the way we always did things. I but like that remember that, that. That's remember the way it was. that exercise was always only strictly about defense and taking care of yourself all through history uh, even around the 1700s they used it a little bit different because this is when the acrobats came about you know the clowns and for the kings and things like that and they had special exercises for that but after the second world war maybe before that time we started thinking about it there was Jack LaLanne came about we in the 60s we started having aerobic activity nobody we just went for walks that's all we ever did nobody did push-ups nothing and they, these people kind of opened our eyes to structuring exercise maybe because the play was leaving us already. Now we, at least we're going to still have the exercise and now we'll structure it a little bit so we can get it in there. But it was always a spontaneous thing. We always say we we go out that door, slam the door, barefoot. We're outside, and mom the will see you door, at yeah, dusk. and just be back when the street lights came back on. That's right. We That's were right. free. We were uh, not under any threat. So today it's completely changed. Kids are under threat. Parents feel like their kids are under threat. We have to protect them in every which way. Mm -hmm. When actually the letting go part, the education of. Uh, being a youth getting mature is that slowly but surely letting go of our parents exploring things coming back to them for advice having your friends uh give you advice this all happened during play this happened to fun time when we played tag and hide go seat and whatever else we did red light we did, green light yeah i mean most of these games if you said to a kid eight years old today, you know what red light, green light is? They probably don't know what it is. We don't know what anything is, not mm -hmm. as far as play is concerned. We know academics, and, you know, that's great. Our society is moving forward, but is it really? When we're taking play, uh, inherent human activity that was always there, when we take it out of our lives, uh, it causes problems. And now what we have is lots of structure, too much structure. That's exactly and we, right. And at Jiu-Jitsu, I see this. We have a nice hour of ins instructions, but then we have another hour of play, what we just call rolling. Mm -hmm. You do what you want. You go with your friends. And this is where you find your boundaries. This is how people teach each other. No, you did this wrong. This is why I beat you. Oh, you beat me? Show me this. You know, this type of thing is so important. And this is what I learned when I rolled around with my buddies in the dirt when we played all these games. So enough of the tyrant but yeah, I really I, mean, I, I really want to get this across that this is tied directly to our health the health of our future generations and, and we're taking it away from them I, I feel bad already we took it away from ourselves yes but we're taking it away from our kids it is so true because it is essential that all of us who appreciate the vital role that play has in the life of our children that we do everything we can to promote it at home in school and in the wider society so what can we do we can work with families uh, to help parents better understand the value of play, how to choose toys and play materials that will promote a quality play and how to build a quality playtime into their family's daily lives. Make it a priority to yeah. play. You ever play with marbles? I played with marbles and jacks, and I could be... You could spend the whole day playing I could, with marbles. Uh, yeah, and I, I was really rather good at jacks, too. Yeah. I mean, I could take jacks, and I could do jack pickups and, you know, just swipe across a whole area. I loved it. Yeah, I used to play. I used to have all different colors. So I had the white guys over here, and I had the blue guys, and the black guys, and the brown guys, and they were all regiments, and they are moving across territories and fighting each other, and the cavalry would come in. And you had I mean, your collection and you had of This imagination was going crazy. And my parents would once in a while peek in the door, you know, in my room, if I'm in there in the wintertime, and say, yeah, oh, yeah, I guess he's doing all right. He's having a blast. You know, he's got the marbles, you know. No, it's cool. <laughs> you still have any of your marbles? I do not. No. I know, I know, no. it's weird. But uh, no. I actually found some jacks um, 
on Jack Cruz. On, yeah, yeah, yeah. I found I found Jack Cruz, <laughs> but I actually found some, a ball and Jacks, and uh, I mean, it's like you just don't ever see them in the toy store anymore. No. And I saw them online. Well, I, toys ordered, are I want to show them to business. my. Yeah, I want to show them to my. There you go. <laughs> but you know what? World, that yeah. could be a good thing in a way. But I don't think it's for the right reasons. I well, think it's going out right, of business because people are ordering online oh, and they're right. seeing the toys. Yeah. But I, I really want people to get the idea that we need to get outdoors. Let's see what else they say here. Uh, we can train all early childhood educators to understand the importance of quality play for social, emotional, and intellectual development and how to appropriately integrate early academic skills into a child-centered play process. This is not time wasted, it is time well spent. And we need to become advocates of the school. We need to get involved in our schools and our communities. Be an active uh, parent, be an active grandparent and um, you know, er, encourage these schools to take action. This could even be, uh, many schools are not aware of, of how they've lost touch. And I think we, the parents and grandparents, need to get yeah. back in there and, and our help producer them. says, face to face is the better alternative than to Facebook. I agree. We'll, we'll be right back, folks. After the break. Like to tell you about the personal training studio that Nico is the owner and president of, Performance Training. Since 1998, Nico has trained individuals and groups to improve their health both mentally and physically. As a certified personal trainer, Nico's main focus is on demonstrating exercises correctly to avoid injury and teaching his clients how to manage their past injuries while getting the most out of their personal training sessions. The Performance Training Studio is filled with unique training equipment that enhances balanced results at a faster rate while minimizing damage and discomfort. For more information, you can give Nico a call at 727-418 8740 or email him at nico at tfnn.com let him know you heard him on tfnn and save up to 100 dollars on a special package just for tfnn listeners act today Tiger TV is an exciting way to experience TFNN programming. See high-definition video, giving you crystal clear charts, as well as seeing some of the faces of TFNN's highly acclaimed financial experts with crisp, full-fidelity sound. Catch Tom O'Brien, John Logan, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Larry Pesavento, Think or Swim, David White, Eddie Hecht, and Daryl Martin in crystal clear, high-definition audio and video. Tiger TV, exclusively at TFNN.com. Has the current market volatility continue to stop you out of trades when the market spikes against you? Now is the perfect time to open up an account with Nadex. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a brand new, completely regulated Chicago-based exchange, and unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their completely free trading platform, which also features real-time charts and full customization capability. One of the advantages of trading with Nadex in volatile markets is that your risk is always capped and you have the ability of keeping your trades open even when the market spikes against you. Nadex is completely completely brand new with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com. Or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, hey, welcome back. So I want to go to Webster's Dictionary and just see what they have to say about the word play it being a noun, of course, but right on top, sword play. Sword. The second one, game and sport. 
Yes. Number three, the conduct, course, or action of a game. Uh, number two, a particular act or maneuver in a game. The action where cards are played, a mm -hmm. piece of a board game, uh, one's turn in a game, sexual intercourse. So there's all kinds of things, but here we have recreation activity. Yeah, okay. Uh, Especially the, spontan the spontaneous or activity of intent. children. Yeah. So it, it gets down to number three, A, B, C, uh, not D, of course, gambling and things like that. No, yeah, I guess but, that's, that's still, I mean, it's got a wide definition. Actually, it's got, well, of course, definition. they have to put it all in there. But, I mean, if you're looking at the way we always did play, then I think we should put certain things up front. This now, is interesting. This Peter Freedom Gray is a quit. PhD. Freedom to quit a game is an essential part and aspect of the play's definition. Mm -hmm. That wasn't in the dictionary. And today, if you're playing a game and you quit, you're called a loser, a quitter. Isn't that interesting? Yeah. Yeah. They wanna, so they wanna keep remember when we played them. tag and somebody's mom called? Okay, yeah, I'll see you see tomorrow. You yeah. No problem. Uh, you know, we'll fill in. It's not a big deal. But today, that's not the case. Freedom is to quit is essential. You know, there's so many parents when when. Um, I can honestly say with my kids, you know, you could say it's a good, bad, or ugly, or whatever. Um, I was not real big into all these team sports. I felt like it was a, too much structure. When yeah. People know me. I don't really like a lot no, of, you uh, know. I agree. And, um, but I mean, I know parents who are like, I, you know, just like their whole life was being on the ball field at 7 o'clock every night. Sure. They weren't having that feeling. It was like jail. You yeah. had to be there. Oh, well, they're the extension there. of the of the kids. Yeah, which they is, were living vicariously through their kids. Yeah, but they were having no life. I I didn't like it. Yeah, so it I like uh, this uh, gentleman here, which is Peter Gray, Ph.D. and. Uh, he, uh, most of this essay he's talking about defines the characteristic of play, but before listing them, there are three general points he wants to make. And the first point is that the characteristic of plays all have to do with motivation, mental attitude, not with the overt form of their behavior. Two people might be throwing a ball or pounding nails or typing words on a computer. One might be playing, the other one might not. To tell which one is playing and which one is not, you have to infer from their expressions and the details of their actions something about why they're doing what they're doing and their attitude towards it. Yeah, the second point is uh, that play is not necessarily all or none. Play can blend with other motives and attitudes and in proportions ranging anywhere from zero to 100 percent. Yes, play, uh, pure play offers or occurs more often in children than in adults. In adults, play is commonly blended with other motives having to do with adult responsibility. This is why in everyday conversation we tend to talk to children about playing and the attitude about a person having a playful attitude is what we call or mm -hmm. a playful spirit yeah. is what we say about adults. Yeah, the third point is that play is not, near, not neatly defined in terms of some single identifier identifying characteristic rather is defined in terms of a confluence of several characteristics. P people before me have studied and written about play have among them described quite a few characteristics. It's self-chosen. Uh, it has uh, its means are more valued than the ends, kind of the process, the journey, yes. not the destination, right? right? Play has structures or rules which are not dictated by physical necessity, but uh, it's uh, emanated from the minds of the player. In other words, we make it up as we all right. along. Right, it's imaginative. That's right. We might change our mind along, uh, mm -hmm. you know, during the way. And it involves an active, alert, but non-stressed frame of mind. I think those are all things that we want to take care of. So um, the author goes in. Uh, this gentleman, he say he elaborates on these characteristics one by one, explains a bit of each by pointing out some of the implications for thinking about the purpose of play. And that first one is, uh, maybe you want to read that one? Yeah, the first one is, and he says, foremost, an expression of freedom. It's what one wants to do opposed to what one obligated to do. Yeah, play is self-chosen, it's self-directed, and they're free to quit. goes back to the Number one yeah, premise play of his article. Is not always accompanied by smiles and laughter, nor are the smiles and laughter always a sign of play, but play is always accompanied by a feeling of, yes, this is what I meant to do right now. I like that. That's very cool. Play you know, I feel the happiest on the days that I'm, you know, I, I, let's, let, me just, let me just interject here. We'll go on to number two and number three. Yeah. But, you know, when I feel most playful is, is, in my everyday life by myself sometimes is when I'm 
doing something and something, I, maybe I'm driving down the road and I see a, a, a thrift store or something. I love the, or a consignment store or something. I love the thrill of the find. It's mm -hmm. kind of a spontaneous. Oh, spontaneous. Look, let's go over oh, there. Let's go see what's there. Yeah. Let's see if there's something cool to see. Yeah. Or I, he, I see a group of people gathered and it turns out to be like a music festival or something or a drumming circle. Yeah. I remember I like uh, back in Michigan when I was hanging out uh, after college and uh, that with my buddy Rick and he called me up during the day, hey, what you doing? Nothing. Let's let's go out to Ann Arbor. So we used to go to Ann Arbor, of course, went to school there. But this is where the music was. This is where the people were. All the little head shops were out there. You know, all the little plays were going on. People were experimenting with all kinds of joys of life in the 60s. Yes. And th that late 60s era, I always think about Ann Arbor because that's where it was all happening. Oh, sure. But we didn't go have a, any specific thing to do mind. We parked downtown. We wandered the streets, bump into friends or not. It didn't matter. It was always just a playful time and that we could spend the whole afternoon together and same, that was a same, beautiful same thing. thing. We, I mean when I think back when growing up here in Clearwater Beach you know we'd go down at sunset to Clearwater Beach and throw the frisbee. Mm -hmm. um, on Saturdays we met at Philippi Park and I, you know there was no intent thing that we were going to do. There wasn't necessarily a football game scheduled. Right. There was a lot of just interacting and talking and now we seem to be you hardly ever see people gathering like that, or they're all afraid there's yeah. some kind of violence. That's My real good friend, Jimmy D. Vitale, who was a photographer who died last year, mm. uh, very sad in his 60s. He was the one who introduced me to the Frisbee many years ago when I came down to Florida in 1975. I met him he was still in college, and he'd come over every afternoon for an hour, and we'd just play Frisbee. It was no structured game to it. We were just tossing back and forth and joking, look at the spin I can do, you know, just fun stuff. Right. So, uh, and again, this is missing from our society and the way I get it now is through jujitsu uh, hanging out with my wife that's yeah. fun too there you you know, go. so yeah, yeah companionship is really important but I remember many many days being alone and playing and getting my mind going and just having a great time what you doing nothing exactly and it feels good that's right, right. yeah number two the author says <clears throat> okay. play is activity in which means are more valued than the ends yeah many of our actions are free in the sense that they don't feel that other people are making us do them but they are not free or at least not experiences free in another sense these are actions that we feel we must do in order to achieve some necessity or much desired goal or end we scratch an itch to get rid of it uh, flee from a tag or to avoid being eaten study uninteresting uh, un and uninteresting book to get a good grade to a test. If there's no itch, there's no tiger, there's no test, uh, or there's no money, or there's no scratch, in most places, we're not playing. Yeah, we're not playing. We're just doing something that we, it's, we're doing. Something that comes up. Because we were told to. In a sense. Yeah. So we're structuring. Yeah, it. and then, and then finally, play is guided by mental rules, folks. That play is freely chosen activity, but is not free. It is not a free form activity. It always has structure, and that structure derives from rules in the player's mind. This point is really an extension of the point that just made about the importance of the means in play. Cool. So now, let's all figure out what we're going to do to play. Well, I think they should play the around with the, the website and take a look at our primal edge. There you, you go. You can play with that for a few minutes and you can be healthy folks. Smoke right back. I like that. You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powered by highly concentrated fulvic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They have been called miracle molecules because, like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com.
No matter what kind of trader you are, 2018 is a great time to try out a subscription to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report. Whether you just plan on diversifying your portfolio with some exposure to gold and gold mining equities, or you're a gold bull that sees 2018 as the year of commodities, now is a great time to sign up for the Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his Gold Report every Monday morning before the market opens and covers a variety of topics including gold, silver, platinum, copper, the XAU and HUI, the dollar, bonds, South African Rand, as well as more than 20 of the most actively traded mining equities. Start your 2018 off with a bang and sign up for The Gold Report today. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. For all the details and to start your subscription right now, visit the front page of TFNN.com and you'll find The Gold Report under Investment Newsletters. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN TFNN, live on your mobile device, 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. And welcome back to the show. I'm uh, looking at this article from the American Journal of Play. And in 1955, I was 11 years old, so this hey, relates to me. I didn't know that there was an article. There's a journal called the American Journal? Of Play. You don't get it? You're not subscribed? <laughs> <laughs> it's actually in the Atlantic, but I like this. This is what we need to have more research on. Since about 1955, children's flea play has been uh, continually declining, at least partly because adults have exerted ever-increasing controls over children's activity, said the author Peter Gray, professor of psychology at Boston College. He defines free play as play... Uh, as play a child undertakes him or herself in which self-directed and end to uh, an end in itself rather than being some kind of organized activity. Yeah, and you look at this picture on the telestrator, these kids on the playground, you know, what are you, kind of your memories of childhood play? You and I talked about it at the beginning of the yeah, show. Yeah, I didn't have Red those. Rover, Red Rover, come yeah. on, send Nico yeah. right over. Well, the, when I was growing up in Sudbury, when I was 10, 11 years old, they had these great big graders and things that were in the neighborhood and they would just dump these big uh, shells, which were, you know, you could climb in one side of it, kind of like a fort, and they had them. So we'd be playing in those things, you know. And of course my my cousin and I would um, play Harry at the Spy. Did you remember Harry at no. the Spy series? Yeah, it was like we were looking for clues for things. And then we would climb trees, and we would turn around and put our legs around the trunk of the tree mm -hmm. on a branch, and we pretended we were secretaries <laughs> for David Cassidy and Bobby Sherman or something, <laughs> and, you know, or something like that, and we were typing on the tree, ch -ch -ch ding, and we'd grab a leaf and drop the leaf down, and that would be a piece of paper. I mean, uh, cool you know, stuff. or weeping willow trees. Mm -hmm. we, that was where our houses. See, oh, the, you know how yeah, the willows would come it, down, yeah, and yeah. this is my house, and that's your house over there. Yeah, we built actually built igloos and stuff like that in our backyard. Oh, just so I'm who and what is it. interfering with our child's play? Parents who hover over and intrude in children's play are a big part of the problem, he says. It's hard to find groups of children outdoors at all anymore, and if you do find them, it's like, uh, like to be wearing uniforms, following directions of coaches and uh, getting... Uh, While well, the know, parents dutifully watch and, and cheer, cheer and often yeah, yell, yeah. right? Yeah. The parents are young. <laughs> Researchers found that compared to 1981, children in 1997 spend less time in play and much less free time. They spend 18% more time in school, 145% more time doing schoolwork, and 168% more time shopping with their parents. They, don't have, they aren't by themselves very much either. 
anymore. And let's just kind of wrap this up, guys, with five ways that play benefits kids. Let's get back to the benefits. Let's find a way, and I think ultimately benefits the family. Play gives these children a chance to find and develop a connection to their own self-identified and self-guided interests. It helps them, cre you know, create who they are. Yeah, the uh, activities that make up free play, kids learn to direct themselves and pursue and elaborate on their interests in a way that can sustain them throughout their life. That is right. That's true, because I remember all those things things and all those things spur me on today. Yeah, and in these adult directed sports and these teams, <clears throat> these kids are working for praise and trophies and how many kids all get a trophy. So there's no real recognition of yeah. you know, it, it kind of gets crazy. Does, but, mm -hmm. yeah. It's also through play that children first learn how to make decisions, solve problems, use their creative critical thinking skills. Yeah, exert their self-control and concert their troll and how to follow rules yeah. and things like that. As children direct their own free play and solve problems that they come up with and must exert control over themselves and at must at times accept restrictions of their own behavior. They experience boundaries and, <clears throat> and, and ebb and flow and where you can go and when you need to pull yeah, back. Yeah, and I'm just thinking of something <clears throat> here. That particular banter that we do as children creating our own brown boundaries or being created for them by other children sets us up to not go crazy when our parents do that. And here's the critical point. We open this up with a picture. Let me see if I can go back to it. You know, of these young teens and stuff. And it says, children who do not have the opportunity to control their own actions and follow through on their own decisions to solve their own problems and to learn how to follow rules in the course of play grow up feeling that they are not in control of their own lives and fate. And they grow up feeling they are dependent on luck and the goodwill and whims of others. And this is where we're seeing anxiety and depression in our young people. These individuals feel a lack of control over their own lives. That's right. Also, children learn how to handle their emotions, including anger and fear, during play. In a free play, children put themselves in both physically and socially challenging situations and learn to control the emotions that arise from these stressors. They play, they slide, they climb trees. And I like, to, I like to try and remind even my adult children, you know, we tend to want to jump in and fix it for them. Right. Um, right. Okay, and I mean, I am as guilty of that as anything, you know, that you need to do this, you need, or you should, or you should, or you need, ooh, listen to that. It even mm -hmm. sounds bad hearing it. <laughs> but your, your intention is good. Yeah. But, but when you come about it instead, a, a wise woman taught me once, you say, geez, Nico, you are so smart and so bright. I know you'll figure it out. There you go. You know, One, oh, okay. you're, you know, you'll, you'll get it all straight. Yep. You'll figure it out. Yep. Oh, I know you'll get it solved. Exactly. And that don't, don't builds give the them confidence. The mm -hmm. uh, play helps children to make friends and learn to get along with each other as equals. That's mm -hmm. a really important thing because uh, this is bullying they, that's going on. Oh, they learn how to handle their emotions, including anger and fear during play. Yeah. And they experience what it's like, what happens maybe if you act angry on the playground, other people move away from you and they go, hey, that didn't work for me very well. Yeah, the author here says learning to get along and cooperate with others as equals may be the most critical evolutionary function of human social play. And that social play is nature's means of teaching young humans that they are not very special. Mm. I like the way they put that. Yeah. Because we always say to our children, you're very special. Of course, we want to encourage that. But here's... here's Everyone's special. That's right. Not only that, but you're part of a team. You're part of the, uh, this uh, community. You're part of the tribe. Uh, yeah, watch the word team, because again, we... Well, yeah, you know, of course, yeah. yeah. Right, I, I caught that it. myself. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it's kind of a strange thing, but we're, we're part of a tribe, and everyone, everyone is, is, is wonderful. Yeah, most yeah. important, though, guys, play is a source of happiness. And this is a great... I'm so glad you put these things together for the show today, because this weekend I sent you um, an article. It's very long. We mm -hmm. might have to... Uh, throw it in the newsletter because it's so long, mm -hmm. you know, the link to it or something. Sure. But it's all about health and happiness and how important these two go together. And many of us are working so hard and not taking time to play as adults that we're not enjoying our lives and we're yeah. in pursuit of the things that don't matter. Yeah, it's, uh, it's the lucky person who has a job that they just love, you know. I mean, love as play. 
love as you know maybe being a dance instructor or a jujitsu instructor this is fun stuff sure there's stressors but i yeah. mean you know what better way for your life to involve play as an activity and teaching other people to that and that's kind of what i'm in I'm, I'm teaching people these uh exercise regimes and stuff that are so structured at the same time i'm telling it don't take it so darn seriously well we're going to have a friend of uh mine on perhaps while you're gone that has a, his business is called Primal Play, mm -hmm. and you know, I know you're a big fan of that. And I prefer to be outdoors when I get my exercise. I I feel when I connect with nature, I'm I'm back being that small child. Yep. Oh yeah. I have his <laughs> website here. Movement is medicine. Okay, well, it might not be his website because he's here locally, but oh, okay. uh, but that's okay. Yep. Um, a lot of people are really capitalizing on the Primal Play. So the loss of play and the rise of anxiety and depression. Let's connect some dots here. And maybe go back to just how can we solve some of these issues of anxiety and depression? Let's just get back to playing more. That's right, and we will be right back. Mm -hmm. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12, 6, and 3 months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of tfnn.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step-by-step -step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. Hi folks, Tom O'Brien here. If you'd like to get my daily newsletter, Market Insights, then now is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial. Every morning by 9.30, I send out my morning letter to subscribers with market commentary on a variety of markets, currencies, and commodities to keep investors up to date on the day's trading action. Included in Market Insights are specific buy and sell recommendations for stocks, ETFs, and even options, with stops and price targets included for every trade in my newsletter. If you'd like to try my newsletter risk-free for 30 days, then head over to the front page of TFNN and you'll find Market Insights under Trading Newsletters. I use my years of trading experience to bisect and dissect the market every morning and give my subscribers the most important information they need to know for the day ahead. I even issue afternoon updates for my subscribers whenever warranted with important market action. I'm always scouring the market for the next great trading opportunity. Sign up for your 30-day free trial to my daily newsletter, Market Insights, today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Wow! Go get them, folks! No matter where you're listening to TFNN programming, you can always access your favorite shows on demand through TFNN.com. TFNN airs live programming every market day from 8 a.m. till 6 p.m. Eastern, and you can view each program by accessing Tiger TV through our homepage. We even have an easy link for all mobile devices, including iPhones, iPads, and Android devices, located in the top right-hand corner of the TFNN homepage. You can use your smartphone to view Tiger TV, but if you don't have a connection that can keep up with streaming live video, then you can simply visit tfnn.mobi in the browser of your smartphone for live streaming audio of all our programs. The mission of TFNN is to educate our audience directly and interactively through our interactive website and call-in talk shows. TFNN is able to teach all levels of investors the technical skills needed to trade in today's marketplace. In order to get the best information possible, TFNN has assembled the most respected financial minds in the country to provide the most current news and comprehensive advice available. TFNN.com. Educating investors.
Wow, that really says it home. Oh, good catch up. Yeah, that was a great one, Hal. Yeah, you know, Jack Nicholson said it in The Shining, all work and no play make Jack a dull boy. Yeah. Uh, one of the other points that I really wanted to uh, hammer home is that play involves an active, alert, but non-stressed frame of mind. I like that. Active but non-stressed. So much of what we're doing today is active and stressed. That's right. We're, and we're putting expectations on it. Uh, the real thing that he talks about in this, as far, as far as the rules are concerned, you know, the kids kind of make up the rules. Yeah, we have a game called such and such, and there are some rules, but today we have this rule, and today we have this rule. We change a little bit to meet the environment or how many people are playing, and it's never taken seriously. And then when mother calls, we go home, nobody's mad that you quit. It's just a nice, nice framework, and it's a framework that I, I grew up on. It's a framework that I use for myself today, trying to structure play in with everything, because I think everything can be play in a sense. Uh, I think it's very important to a uh, development of our children, but it's also, I mean, I'm entering the later years of my existence. What else is there but to play and have fun? That's supposed to be it. You're we're supposed not going to be, work we're not be 30, taking 40, any of this years. stuff with us. No, we're not, and uh, that, that is a good point, too. We're, and do we ever take it with us? No. Even from being a teenager into, uh, you know, being an adult, we don't take anything with us except what we learned, and what we learned at play. Or I the think memories of the fun play, the a fun time it's we huge. Had. Because if you don't have those fun memories where everything was free, if you don't have that, where, where is your basis for freedom and play anyway? Yeah, let's work on collecting experiences and not things, because the best things in life are that's, not things. That's right. And real, they're free. Real profound, but... Yeah. <laughs> you know, oh. things in life are free. Everyone exactly, free. exactly. And you know, as I said, just to finish, you know, we got to start doing the dot connecting, and I hinted at it right before, but we are seeing in the populations of our young people and in the populations of, of adults alike, you know, this increase in anxiety and depression from the 1950s to the present day. And I think you hit on it when you made the comment that after World War II, well, we had that very, you know, this militant military war of such where we saw this this you know structured life and then we started to put all that structure back into our houses our houses became row houses right yeah, and then was, our kids yeah. went into school and then everything became we structured stood at attention and we ducked and uh, ran from the atomic bombs and we had all these structures out of war but we also have the play in our memory and uh, this is what we have to get back to uh, the frizz becomes the mind you know with the non-structure we have we do have toys that have non structure yeah I, I have some kind of like I said I have some friends who who are real involved in the unschooling uh, movement and although many people may be thinking that's a little too unstructured mm -hmm. for them uh, it seems to be working very well for many many children and many many families taking them out of that stressful thing of having to be at this schedule really it's like you and I have often said the school schedule itself is not in the sink or the chronobiology of a young developing human. No, you know, homeschooling and schooling is the answer, I think. I, you know, I, when I hear about what's happening with the school system, but the problem we've got, homeschooling is great. Both parents have to work because why? Because we we're think, slaves. Because we're slaves, we think we have to work because we've got to have that bare house. And that other article that uh, I mm -hmm. sent to you, and, um, and uh, gosh. So not only is play too serious, or general life is too serious and our work is too serious everything is a little too serious folks yeah exactly <laughs> and i think that maybe we just need to like my great grandmother used to say honey don't take yourself so seriously there you go you know or that lady. saying don't sweat the small stuff because it's all small stuff that's right well hey we'll thanks for sticking show, around folks bye bye have a great day Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. 
Thus was born the Chapman Wave Sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. You're watching Tiger TV.